For the past week, the Middle East uh, and the world has seen a lot of turmoil following the assassination of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani by US forces. And a lot have been said about Soleimani that he was a terrorist, that he deserved to die, that he was an evil person. But the, the fact is that the, his killing was a continuation of the imperialist policy that the US and the West has carried out in the Middle East for decades, if not more. And especially coming on top of uh, the US intervention in Iraq, the invasion of Iraq which uh, killed up until now uh, by some sources up to and even more than one and a half million people. The same things has been done to uh, Afghanistan. Is uh, Syria has been dragged down into a state of barbarism. The same you can say about Libya and so on and, and so on. The, the killing of Soleimani was a continuation of this policy uh, of, 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 of US uh, imperialism, uh, thinking that it's okay to meddle and attack, intervene however it wishes in the region in order to satisfy the narrow needs of the US capitalist class. Um, now, the main reason behind this particular attack had nothing to do with Ghassan Soleimani or whether he was a good or bad person. I mean, we just have to look at the, the friends, very, uh, Trump's very good friends, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel and um, the Al Saud family in, in Saudi Arabia, who are certainly not uh, uh, civilized people or are known for treating uh, people in, in a democratic and mild mannered fashion, but yet they are still best friends with the, with, with, with the Trump family. This attack was, the, the main reason behind this attack was that Donald Trump is in a very, very bad situation. It's a very tough situation in the U.S. He's under pressure from the U.S. establishment uh, who is, uh, who is uh, uh, trying to impeach him. And he's trying to detract attention away from this, basically to, 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 to whip up uh, a mood of hysteria and pa patriotic hysteria, uh, and nationalist hysteria, in order to galvanize support behind him, uh, rally the, the, the nation behind him and, and det detract focus from this impeachment case. Furthermore, he has been uh, humiliated uh, over the past few months uh, in the sense that Iran has been carrying out several attacks uh, for, uh, for one in September in Saudi, Saudi Arabia where it attacked a very important oil installation, uh, sorry, um, uh, oil refinery which basically knocked out uh, half of uh, Saudi Arabia's uh, oil production out of the world market and, uh, and, and also in Iraq where Iranian backed uh, groups have been uh, attacking and putting pressure on U.S. bases and, and, and the U.S. embassy. And Trump was kind of trying to save face in the world, trying to appear as a man of deeds and in this sense, uh, from his point of view, improve his own negotiation position, which is only, you know, negotiations for his personal benefit. And that's all what Trump does, is things that is in his own and his immediate family's uh, uh, personal benefit. Furthermore, he's been goaded and, and supported by a layer of uh, hawks, uh, extreme right-wingers in the U.S. Uh, establishment, especially in the defense establishment, who see the, the, the past years of very humiliated, set, humiliating setbacks for U.S. imperialism, for the U.S. army and military and so on, especially in Iraq and Afghanistan, in Syria, where the U.S. basically ha has been completely defeated. Uh, and, and further and beyond and, and especially in relation to Iran and they see the struggle against Iran as the main way to uh, re uh, how do you say uh, re-establish the position and the honor of the US uh, of US imperialism so to say and that's why they are dead set determined on provoking a military clash with with, uh, w with Iran, of course, there's also been some people, in, uh, especially some uh, some of the Democrats and also some uh, European uh, bourgeois who've been opposed to 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 this uh, to this attack, who've come out against Trump uh, and and attacking him. I see now that in the U.S. Congress, the Democrats are trying to uh, uh, how do you say curtail Trump's ability to wage uh, wage war. 
um, and they are trying to appear as anti-war uh, uh, people who are, you know, concerned about the state of the Middle East and so on. But the fact is that these people are just as imperialist as Trump. They're not opposed to Trump's imperialist behavior, but they, they fear that Trump's behavior is uh, actually destabilizing and threatening their own imperialist um uh, imperialist interest that the killing of Soleimani was not the best way to pursue the US interest in the region with and which you know an interest which are to dominate the region and to gain as much as possible economically and, and politically from 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 their intervention uh, they were the same people who enthusiastically participated in the in, in the Iraq war uh, either from the beginning or later on when they took it over they were the same people during the Obama administration who ramped up US interventions in many places amongst others in in, in Syria who not only did not withdraw from uh, uh, Afghanistan but actually increased US presence uh, in, in Afghanistan and actually saw an increase of US drone missions and bombings uh, 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 in relation to the former um, Bush uh, administration so uh, that those people um, do not represent anything but another wing of US imperialism who don't feel that Trump's action is actually in the interest of the US ruling class and in that I think they, they kind of actually might might be right in the sense that this blow although the killing of Soleimani is a blow to the to the Iranian regime Soleimani was a very senior person in the Iranian regime he had very close personal relationships with, uh, especially with Assad, with Putin, and with a lot of the key uh, people in the region, uh, militarily and politically. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the regime has actually been strengthened on the back of, the, uh, of this attack. The fact is that the Iranian regime has been under a lot of pressure in the past couple of years. Uh, first of all, Iranian allied groups such as Hezbollah in Lebanon and the, the Shia militias that the Iranians support in uh, and the political organization that they support in Iraq have de facto been in uh, in power in Lebanon the government which was formed about a year ago is that is more or less a Hezbollah government which has been carrying out austerity and attacks against living standards and the revolution that we saw in Lebanon uh, only a few months ago with millions of people coming onto the streets was an attack it was a reaction to these reaction austerity policy policies these right-wing bourgeois politics basically which was being carried out by a government which was de facto in the hands of Hezbollah and Hezbollah came out opposed to that movement and therefore saw its uh, position and its legitimacy decline in the eyes of the masses. Before, for many years, Hezbollah could hide behind the, 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 the struggle against imperialism, so to say. The struggle, uh, the, the war against the Israelis, for, for, for example, and uh, uh, be, how do you say, portray itself as a defender of the Lebanese people, a defender of of, of, of national right of, for self-determination and therefore appear a bit more progressive. But now when they are in power, they're, they're exposed for what they really are, which is just bourgeois politicians with a different headscarf, you know, with a headscarf, so to say, but nonetheless bourgeois politicians acting in the interests of the Shia bourgeoisie uh, in, in Lebanon and their allies in the region, especially in, in, in Iran. In Iraq, we saw the similar situation that Iranian-backed groups, basically, for the, since the Iraq War, have been struggling with the U.S. Uh, in, been in a struggle with the U.S. to take over the Iraqi state apparatus, and that's basically been carried out. The vast majority of uh, key positions in the Iraqi state and military are now uh, under the control, or close to being under the control, of Iranian-aligned uh, uh, groups. Uh, and the, 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 the um, and therefore the responsibility for all the corruption, mismanagement, and all the crimes, the austerity, all of this stuff that's been carry, carried out by this extremely reactionary regime, has also fallen on uh, the shoulders of, of of these groups and also been associated with Iran. And therefore, in in October, when a revolutionary movement erupted inside Iraq which was against the corruption, against the nepotism, against unemployment, against poverty. It was a very, very powerful uh, class-based uh, uh, um, movement 
uh, calling for the end of the sectarian politics, the end of quota politics, a quota system, a sectarian quota system which was introduced by the US imperialism itself, but then taken over by Iranian aligned groups. Uh, they've been under heavy attack by Iran. In fact, Qasem Soleimani was traveling to, uh, to uh, Beirut and Baghdad calling for the, uh, the, the, the prime ministers to stay firm, the ruling class to stay firm, not to give any concessions to these movements and coordinating a violent crackdown which in Iraq has led to at least 20,000 wounded and several thousand killed and these are very very conservative uh, uh, figures carried out by Shia militias who are uh, closely linked more or less controlled by Iran so um, that that has also made uh, how to say that has also led the attention of the revolutionaries against Iran and in fact the, the slogan of many people on the street has been Iran out and for the right of self-determination of the Iraqi peoples uh, themselves. Um, in Iran as well, there's been a similar movement, there's uh, similar developments, let's say. In November, there was a huge, a very, very powerful uh, movement coming on top of uh, the, the regime, removing uh, subsidies for fuel, which meant that overnight fuel, fuel prices tripled. Uh, which is an extremely big blow to, to, the, to the Iranian people who are dependent on these fuels just for, for, for these subsidies for their survival. Um, and you saw a massive protest movement coming out amongst the poor, the dispossessed, the working class, especially the youth, very, very radical calling for the downfall of the regime. These were layers which were f formerly behind the regime, in fact, who were the support who supported the regime in, in previous uh, years, but were now coming out radically opposed to the regime. And this shows that the regime in Iran is a, in a very, very weak position. And again, the only way it survived was by vicious uh, uh, crackdown. They, um, uh, what do you call it? They, they introduced an internet blackout and a violent crackdown which has killed so, uh, at least 1,500 people, uh, wounding seven to 10,000 people and arresting just as many. A, a, a very, very vicious uh, uh, crackdown. And this shows that the regime from all fronts has been in a very, very uh, tough situation. And the killing of Soleimani manages is actually a great help for it because as much as the people of Iran and Iraq and also Lebanon and beyond hate their own immediate regimes, they are even more. Uh, uh, they even they hate the U.S. imperialism even more because of the crimes that the U.S. has carried out in the region, not just in the past ten years, but even going you know in the past hundred years, uh, going back to at least uh, the Second World War, after which it became the major power in the region. Uh, in Iran, for instance, carrying out a, a coup in, and supporting a very brutal dictatorship, uh, implementing sanctions against the regime for, for, for decades, which has ruined the economy uh, of, of, the, um, of the country and ruined the livelihoods of people. In Iraq, where I said as before, as I said before, the, the, the invasion has killed uh, more than a, one and a half million people and ruined the lives of, 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 of several generations. It really has plunged the whole country into a state of barbarism. There's no love in this region for U.S. imperialism and therefore as much as people hate their own regime, they, they, they are willing, they, are, uh, they hate U.S. imperialism far more. And the regime now, the Iranian regime, is using this attack in order to galvanize support for its regime. In the uh, Iraqi government, where only a few months ago some of the Shia uh, groups had withdrawn from parliament in a, in a, in a demagogic manner, uh, the, uh, the group of Muqtada al-Sadr in particular, demagogically withdrawn from parliament and given support to so-called, you know, uh, uh, support to the movement on the streets. Uh, well, last week he was back in parliament calling for uh, the U.S. Uh, to uh, to vacate its bases in Iraq and to leave Iraq uh, completely, and it's clear that the Iranians are trying to push the whole move the mood of the country, galvanize it against U.S. imperialism, and also use it to push U.S. out of Iraq and out of the U.S. state apparatus, giving Iran a tighter hold uh, over that. 
But most importantly, in order to divert the attention of the masses so as to isolate the revolutionary youth in Tahrir Square in Baghdad and beyond in order to crush that movement. In Iran, it's a similar thing. Sorry, in Iraq. This was about Iraq. In Iran, it is a, is a similar thing. Um, you have, you know, as much as everyone hates the regime, first of all, U.S. imperialism is, is hated far more. And Qasem Soleimani was perhaps one of the few figures which stood outside which was seen not as quite as the same as the rest of the Iranian regime by the people. He was uh, uh, sort of aloof from ordinary day-to-day -day politics of Iran. Uh, he was seen as the person who was fighting against ISIS, against Islamic fundamentalism, against US imperialism in the region and uh, for some sort of democracy, in fact, a non-sectarian uh, 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 struggle that he was carrying out. This, is what, this, is, this was what he was associated with. And therefore, his funeral has been, and, his, and his death has been made into a major PR campaign by, by the government. Only two months ago, after the crushing of the movement in, in November, the state uh, tried to organize a counter demo, a pro-regime demonstration, which ordinarily in like 10 years ago, a, a similar protest gathered millions of people. But this time the, 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 the protests were in the tens of thousands, which showed the, how weak the regime had really gotten. But when Soleimani was killed and his procession, his funeral procession was going through Iran, they, they, they managed to draw hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people out on the streets. And people in Iran are, uh, and they're whipping up war hysteria, and people in Iran are ready to, uh, to go to war with, 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 with the U.S. and defend themselves against the U.S. And for now, this has managed, this, uh, this has allowed the regime to galvanize a, 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 a mood of, uh, sorry, a, a, a reactionary layer behind itself and rally the nation behind itself, so to say, cutting across the class lines uh, and, and strengthening itself temporarily. Of course, in the future that will change again because fundamentally nothing is solved and the regime remains extremely reactionary. But for now they managed to stabilize the situation with the kind help of uh, Mr. Trump. Now, um, a lot of people have said that, oh, this can lead to war and there's a threat of war, uh, especially in the Middle East, the threat of war is being whipped up. I think even some of the Western commentators have said, oh, anything can happen now. But the reality is that, that there is no appetite in the U.S. to go to war with Iran. Um, first of all, Iran is not like Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and these are two countries where the U.S. has suffered very, very heavy defeats, very uh, historic defeats, in fact, in the past uh, 20 years. But Iran is a very different uh, country. First of all, it's a, uh, is a, is a much uh, rougher country to occupy in the sense that it is full of mountains. It uh, has a much more developed uh, army. It has a huge layer of people who are armed and who are, who are prepared to defend themselves. And it has a military who, which is uh, battle-hardened in Syria, in, uh, in Iraq, in, in Afghanistan, other places where it's intervened. It's uh, relatively modern, uh, it's got a, a good equipment, and it's got a people who are willing to die until the end against U.S. imperialism. However much they do not like their own regime, they're still willing to take to, to, to dive uh, to, in, in a struggle against uh, U.S. imperialism. So a land invasion of Iran is out of the question. If, if the U.S. Would, would do it, it would be the biggest defeat in the history of the U.S. and it would send, it, it would be the biggest crisis probably in the, in the history of the, of, of the U.S. It's impossible. If the U.S. itself is not uh, is not in a state to go into war. It already the state has a debt of 23 trillion dollars, which is already uh, leading it to a huge uh, economic crisis and to attacks on living standards, which is whipping up, uh, which is causing a radicalized mood on on the ground. The the American people are extremely war weary. They 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 are sick and tired of U.S. foreign interventions, which is costing lives and money that they have to pay for. Uh, when the U.S. went to war against Iraq, there were millions of people on the streets 
in the US. This time we're going to see tens of millions of people, if not more, uh, going onto the streets. And, and that's why, in fact, you know, Trump came to power promising to end these endless wars. And uh, now that he's being dragged <laughs> or, or, or supposedly was being dragged into a new one, there was not there was not going to be any appetite for that. Any attempt for the US to go to a, a, a major conflict with Iran would lead to a huge social and political crisis which it couldn't come out of. And that's why, in fact, that even the Obama administration could not even pass through a bombing campaign of Syria only a few years ago, uh, let alone a land invasion. And a land invasion of, 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 uh, of, of Iran is also completely uh, ruled out for that, for that particular uh, uh, reason. The fact is that... Um, that the U.S. imperialism is in an extremely weak, uh, weak position. We saw on Tuesday evening the Iranians retaliated against uh, against the uh, U.S. Uh, imperialism. We, what? How was this retaliation? First of all, it was very. Uh, carefully calibrated. The Iranians sent a certain type of missiles which would be easily easily detected by uh, US radars so they could vacate the bases. So they didn't clearly didn't want any casualties which would uh, from a PR point of view force the Americans to retaliate again and therefore could see an escalation of the situation. But at the same time they showed that they could send ballistic missiles to any um, to any uh, base in uh, U.S. base in the region, and there are tens of thousands of U.S. troops based in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in uh, Syria, in Jordan, and in the in the Gulf countries, especially in Bahrain and and Qatar and in Saudi Arabia. Um, and there was nothing the U.S. could do about it. This means that the, the the position of U.S. troops in Iraq is completely untenable if it wasn't for the uh, kind, you can say, uh, acceptance of the Iranians. They could also attack by way of uh, one of the many, many groups that they support, uh, militia groups that they have in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, where they basically control hundreds of thousands of, of, of militiamen who've been battle-hardened in Syria, in Iraq. They know the terrain, they have local backing, which the U.S. doesn't, and they could attack any of the U.S. positions from any angle. The fact is that only a few months ago, in September, the Iran showed that they could even uh, attack the heart of Saudi Arabia, uh, one of its key uh, oil installations, and get away with it. There was no one that could do anything about it. And with that, they sent a, a very clear message. They could also close the Hormuz Strait, which is a which is a, a pathway through which 20% of the world's oil uh, trade goes through. And if they close that, then oil prices will skyrocket, and we could see a, a deep crisis in the in the world economy, which is already at a very very uh, fragile uh, state. There will not be a war with Iran. Even a aerial campaign is highly unlikely because, as I said, it would lead to retaliation, which would which would cost very dearly for U.S. Uh, imperialism. Um, of course, at some point you could have an accidental clash happening, but uh, that will probably be to the detriment of U.S. imperialism. And the fact is that over the past years, although the U.S. U.S. imperialism is by far the most uh, the strongest imperialist force on the planet by far outstripping uh, all of its nearest uh, rivals i think the the u.s army is um, uh, as much as valuable as uh, as uh, the, the next nine uh, armies um, coming after it but nevertheless it is because of the things that i explained is it is uh, it has met its limitations and especially in the Middle East is being forced uh, uh, to, to, to retreat, to accept that there's a new balance of power and in fact Iran is rising as the more powerful uh, uh, military power on the ground. And these things that these, these uh, reactions of Trump, which in my opinion are knee-jerk reactions, uh, which are not thought through to the end, uh, are basically serving to reveal this uh, situation even more, bring it to the, to, to the surface. Now, for instance, there's a push by the Iranians to push out the U.S. out of Iraq, and there's very little the U.S. imperialism can do about it. Only the fact that two days ago, 
for the first time in I don't know how many years, I, I have no idea, I, probably forever, a US military base was bombed by ballistic missiles and the only uh, reaction you had by Donald Trump coming out on top of it was, the first reaction he made was to say, all is good. That was, uh, that was uh, the, how Trump's uh, tweet uh, started, saying, don't worry, everything is good, everything is fine, it's order. Well, the US, a US military base has just been attacked by ballistic missiles and they didn't have anything to say about it. And now, today, they're calling for negotiations to sit down with Iran. It shows the, the, the crisis and the limitations that the US imperialism has reached in the region. And in fact, over the past several months, there's been a push by, uh, by Iran and its uh, uh, enemies in the region, especially the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia, to come together to make some sort of a deal uh, in, order to, in order to overcome this, because they realize this position as well, as well especially after Iran attacked Saudi installations in September and, and the US did not come to the, to the rescue of the Saudis. They realized that they must make a deal, a regional deal with Iran, uh, pushing uh, out, uh, uh, circumventing the U.S. basically, uh, and now it, it seems that the U.S. You know, before it was Saudi Arabia and Iran who were seen as the destabilizing forces of the region, but now that these forces are trying to come together to to prov to pr provide some sort of stability, uh, it seems that the U.S. is the main source of instability, uh, and that situation will will, will continue. And we're going to see this new balance of forces revealing itself more and more in the next period. Now, what does that mean for the people of the region? It doesn't mean prosperity, it doesn't mean peace, it doesn't mean democracy. None of these forces have any of the interests of the people at heart. Um, what, what the people can have to trust is their own forces. They cannot trust neither US imperialism or uh, uh, Iran's supposed uh, anti-imperialist uh, stance, because in reality they're not anti-imperialist. They want to, they merely want to make a deal with the Americans. They want to sit at the table and have a piece of the pie. That's what the Iranian regime really wants, uh, and not to to actually fight U.S. or Western imperialism at all. They just want to be recognized. The only people who have the interests of the people at heart is the people themselves, the working masses of of the region, in Iraq and Iran, uh, Lebanon. Turkey, Syria, they are the only people who have common interests uh, and the only way to overcome the problems and the barbarism which has been unleashed by these barbaric, by these reactionary regimes is for these people to, to f finish their struggles that they started in Lebanon, in, in Iraq and, and elsewhere by taking power in one country and, and another and overthrowing the capitalist system basically which at the end is the root cause of all the barbarism and, and decay that you see. That you have this amazing uh, region full of uh, natural resources, full of human resources uh, people who, with with a long, proud cultural uh, history, uh, willing to uh, to take uh, their destinies into their own hands and and uh, and build a new society where everyone can live, but it's these reactionary uh, outfits which, time and time again. Uh, uh, distort this and divert these uh, things and introduce sectarianism, barbarism of, of, of all kinds into the, uh, into the equation and plunge the, 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 the region into uh, deeper down, down the path of barbarism. Um, that's the only way forward.